Lamb and Lion Ministries presents Christ in Prophecy, a program that focuses on the fundamentals of Bible prophecy, showing how current events in the news relate to biblical predictions of end time events and the soon return of Jesus. Now, here's your host, Dr. David Reagan. Greetings in the name of Jesus, our blessed hope, and welcome to Christ in Prophecy. My colleague Nathan Jones and I are blessed to have as our special guest again this week a great creation teacher by the name of Mike Riddle. What is the strongest argument against evolution? I love that question because it just opens it up to every area of science. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me get some of the favorite ones I use. The first one is called the origin of the universe. Where did the matter come from to create the universe? Because we all know from good science and logic, from nothing, nothing comes. <laughs> so that that question right there is a killer to the evolution model because you don't get that if you can't get that first piece of matter, you've got nothing. Mm -hmm. But here's one of my other favorite ones: the origin of life. I love that one. Why? Well, let's just take the cell. We'll start with the cell. One cell. We got about sixty trillion of these in our body. Is more complex than any machine. Sixty trillion. Ever. Right. Sixty trillion. <laughs> And each cell is more complex than any machine mankind's ever made. But we don't have to talk about the cell. Let's just talk about one single protein. Okay. Not the DNA or anything, just a single protein. Our best scientists in the world cannot produce one single protein. And they come up with all these explanations. But here's the killer. Life cannot start in the presence of oxygen in the atmosphere. Because oxygen destroys chemical bonds. So if there was oxygen in the atmosphere, life could never begin. So what they teach in our schools is this. The atmosphere was different back then. There was no oxygen. Well, that's wonderful, too, because if we take away all the oxygen, we have no ozone because it's made out of oxygen. And, oh. folks, if we don't have an ozone, those ultraviolet rays come down and fry all life. Everything's dead. So now what they're saying is life started way down deep in the oceans, <laughs> so the sunlight could not reach. And I think, wow, what a wonderful idea. But there's a process of water called hydrolysis, one of those fancy words. Hydro meaning water. Hydrolysis literally means water splitting. Water, we need to survive, but it is one of the worst places in the universe for life to begin. Hmm. So life cannot start with or without oxygen, and it cannot start in water. And then we look at just the structure of a, of a, a proton, protein. We have hands, left and right, and our left and right hands are made up of the same things, four fingers and a thumb, but they're not quite the same. Because you put one hand behind the other, you notice your thumb and fingers are on opposite sides. <laughs> <laughs> amino acids. These are things that make up our proteins, amino acids. They also come in two shapes we call left and right-handed. Oh. And they are mirror images of each other, just like our hands. Well, here's the situation. Every amino acid in all biological proteins and all life is left-handed. Hmm. But the natural tendency, when we let it go by itself, is always to bond left and right. Our best scientists in the world, every experiment we've ever done, always ends up with left and right-handed amino acids, which is about like death. It's a poison to life. But life requires 100% left-handed amino acids. And I'd like to point out right there a scripture, Romans 1, 19 and 20. God has given us all the evidence we need for believing in a creator, and no one has an excuse. And I believe this is one of the great examples right there. Life cannot start by naturalistic processes. I'm surprised you didn't mention the argument that most people use, and that is the argument that uh, of design. Design. Well, this comes under design there. Uh, and we could go days and days on just design. I mean, at our 50th wedding anniversary, my wife and I went to South Dakota, and I saw Mount Rushmore. And it was created by the wind, wasn't well, it? Well, I, I just stood there, <laughs> and I together. thought, you know, isn't it amazing what can be accomplished accidentally by erosion? Yes. You know, when you have something that's designed, you have to have a designer. Right. Uh -huh. When you look at every creature, every animal, every creature, you see incredible design in there that defies evolution. And if I were to say that Mount Rushmore were created accidentally by erosion, a scientist would say I was insane. Exactly. And yet he turns around and says the whole universe happened accidentally. Right. You take a look at our computers. They didn't happen by accident, but they're nothing compared to the human body. There has to be a designer. Yes. 
Well, Romans 1.20 says that. For his invisible attributes, that is, his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly seen since the creation of the world, being understood through what has been made. As a result, people are without excuse. We have yes. no excuse for denying a creator. Exactly. Welcome back to Christ in Prophecy and our discussion of creation with our special guest, Mike Riddle. Mike, let me uh, ask you about uh, DNA. I mean, DNA is so complex, yeah. as I understand it. Even Bill Gates has said it's more complex than anything he's ever been able to program. Uh, how, can, how, how can a person continue to believe in evolution with the evidence of DNA? Well, first of all, the discovery of DNA and what we know about DNA has demolished evolution. But the problem is that's not being told in the school system, the education system. They're being told a whole different story about DNA and and how it supports evolution, but it doesn't. See, the mechanism for evolution, how it works, is we're supposed to get random mutations. Then through a series of random mutations, there's a selection process mm -hmm. that selects only the beneficial ones. Well, there's some problems with that that's not, that are not being told. First of all, mutations do not add new genetic information. Mm -hmm. They tend to take things away or maybe keep it neutral at best, but they have never been known to create new information. Now, we talk about information. Let's just take a look at one DNA molecule, just one DNA molecule. When we compare that to our modern hard drives we have in our mm -hmm. computers, the compactness of the information, one DNA molecule, is over 5 billion, that's with a B, more compact, times more compact than a hard drive that we have today. Wow. That's <laughs> incredible. So where did that vast amount of information come from? And I'd like to give you, well, this is one of my best examples that I think really supports design in a creator God. The monarch butterfly. I love that thing. Now, monarch butterfly starts off as a tiny, tiny little worm there. That's the technical term, larvae. And in about 20 days, it grows to maturity, almost two inches long. That's right. Now, once it reaches maturity, it finds a special leaf and builds a silk pad on the bottom there. And then it connects itself and hangs in a J position. Then after a while, you'll start to see this caterpillar start to move. And when it starts to move, it's going to build the chrysalis, and it builds it from the head back. That's not amazing yet. What happens next is amazing. Once that caterpillar's in that chrysalis, the entire caterpillar, except the heart, dissolves into a green liquid. Ooh. Now, let me ask you a question here. This would be like a homework assignment question. <laughs> Go home tonight, turn yourself into a green liquid. What are you going to do next? <laughs> That's it. You're done. Unless... Somebody who's all intelligent pre-programs information into your DNA so you can reassemble yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is called pre-programmed information. Even if evolution worked, it can't do that. Because if evolution worked, it can only work for the here and now. It cannot see into the future. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think the monarch butterfly is a great case of design intelligence of a creator. So basically you're, you're saying that... that the DNA has demolished evolution as a theory, and yet people cling to it because they close their eyes to the they, evidence. They close their eyes, and also because they're not being taught the truth about what DNA is all Reminds about. Reminds me of that book that came out recently with the title, You Can Lead a Scientist to Evidence, But You Can't Make Him Think. That's right. We're not being taught critical thinking skills anymore. It, it, to me, it reminds me of Romans 121. For though they knew God, they did not glorify Him as God or show gratitude. Instead, their thinking became nonsense and their senseless minds were darkened. They willfully wanted to be ignorant. 